Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Editor Studio and today I'd like to share with you three ways to create animated background in DaVinci Resolve. So let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve we're now on the edit page and we're gonna start by bringing a new Fusion composition in our timeline. We're gonna then move over to Fusion and here we're gonna start by bringing a new background in our working area. I'm gonna link that background to the media out. For this first background, we're gonna use shape nodes. If you don't know about shape nodes, I will link to another video that I've done in the past in the description below. The easiest way to find all the nodes relative to the shape nodes is to just go over to tool and here down there you got shapes and here you have basically all the shapes nodes. Right now I'm gonna bring a S render and a S rectangle to start. I'm gonna then link the S rectangle to my S render and then I'm gonna link the output of my S render to the background. I'm gonna right click on my width expression and here I'm going to link the width to the height. So basically we retain the same size for the height and the width. I'm going to reduce the size of the square, increase the corner radius and change the angle for 45. So right now we just created a small diamond shape. We're going to want to duplicate that and create a grid out of it. So here I'm going to select my S rectangle and hit shift space on my keyboard and I'm going to search for S grid and I'm just going to bring that in. Again, you could just search that right there in your library as well. It's right here. Right now, we're going to increase the number of cells to 60. And same here for the cell Y, 60. We're going to play around with the offset to just bring those diamonds together. And right now, we've just created a grid of diamonds. So we're just going to want to offset some of those. So we're going to do that by using a duplicate. I'm going to select my S grid. It shifts space on my keyboard again. And here, we're going to search for S duplicate and I'm going to bring that in as well. Here we're going to make only one copy and I'm going to offset it as well. So here I'm just going to move it to the side and then here with the Y I'm just going to move it down and we're basically offsetting it to just put it diagonally to the other diamond and create a mosaic. Now we're going to use that pattern that we just created to create three different animated backgrounds. So the first background we're going to create here, we're just going to make some animation on the S rectangle. We're going to make some animation on the size. I'm going to go at frame 40 and here I'm just going to drop a keyframe on the height. And then I'm just going to go to frame zero and I'm going to bring the height down a little bit like that. Now, if we play it, the animation is happening only one time because we've just dropped only two keyframes. So we're going to need to go over to the spline editor select the S rectangle here zoom to fit and we're basically going to loop this animation so I'm going to select my two point here I'm going to hit S on my keyboard to smooth out that animation and then here we're going to select set ping pong and that's just going to create a loop and that's going to be our first animated background now you can easily change the color of the diamond or the color of the background or even readjust the shape the animation will remain and it will just experiment a bit more with the style now, another technique to animate that pattern is going to be to use a waviness node. So here I'm going to select my S render, hit shift space on my keyboard, and we're going to search for waviness, and it will automatically animate your pattern. Now you can experiment with different waviness parameter, like the speed, for example, that you could reduce. You could change it from vertical to horizontal. You could adjust the strength as well. So here are some examples of what you can do by playing around with the scale, the strength and the speed. Again, you can also make deeper modifications by going back to the shape rectangle and just make uh, some shape modification there. Because once you have an animation that is looping, it's easy to just make some modification and see those change, how it is affect the animation. And that's usually by experimenting that you get the best results. And the third way to utilize this pattern that we've created is using the ripple node. So we're going to hit shift space on our keyboard and we're going to search for ripple and we're going to bring that in. Now, the first thing we're going to do is here, we're going to untick shine and we're going to tick animate. And now if we play it already by default, you can see that we have an animation going on. Next, I want to bring the decay down to zero. So it just cover up the entire frame. And now most of the creative choices are up to you. You can play around with the amplitude. You can play around with the frequency as well as the speed. Generally for background, I rather having like a low speed, so for example here, 0.03 or 0.04, because it's supposed to be a background, so it's not supposed to be too distracting. So here I'm usually keep it uh, quite low for the speed. And two other things that you can play around with here is the ripple shape. So right now we're in circular, but you can do as well square, horizontal, vertical, exponential, star, and radial. You can also play with the wave shape. So here we have also a bunch of options that you can play around with. 
and one last thing is that here you can have multiple ripples so right now we have one ripple that is fixed in the center but we can just move that ripple around to have it affect uh, you know for example here at the corner and we could just activate here ripple 2 and have it in the second corner ripple 3 same activate it and have it in another corner and you can have up to five ripple and you can mess around with those ripple independently so with the decay the frequency and the amplitude again so you can really really customize it and get something that you want again here are some examples that i've just come up with by just playing around with it for like five ten minutes you can really do a lot of things one important thing to remember when you're working on those background is that each change on any parameter throughout those nodes can really have a huge effect on the end result. It's really about experimenting, so don't be scared to go back on your first node and mess around with some parameter there. Again, it's by experimenting that you will get the best result. How this video was helpful and that did give you some ideas. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye! Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com.